Today we hear Matthew's account of the betrayal of Jesus. Yesterday we heard John's story. Matthew gives us a little bit more detailed description of that particular evening. We're told that prior to the meal, Judas had gone to see some of the religious leaders and asked for money to turn Jesus over to them. And they agreed to pay him 30 pieces of silver. Then later at the Last Supper, at the meal, Jesus reveals that someone will betray him. The other apostles are distressed and they all ask, is it I? Jesus says that it would be better if the person who was betraying him had never been born. Pretty strong words. And then when Judas asks, surely it is not I, Jesus confirms that he is the one. The big question people have asked through the centuries, why did Judas betray Jesus? Was he angry? Was he disappointed? Did he hate Jesus? I think we can assume that Judas, like the other apostles, loved Jesus. He agreed to stay with Jesus and to be a part of his company. And he witnessed all the miracles and heard the teachings of Christ. Some suggest it might have been greed. We hear in other gospel accounts that Judas was the keeper of the common purse, the money pouch. And on occasion, he complained about the cost of the perfume, for instance, that was used by a woman to anoint Jesus. And we're told that he complained because he was stealing from the common purse. Some also believe that Judas was disappointed that Jesus was not turning out to be the kind of Messiah he had hoped for. He may have thought that Jesus would lead an uprising, a popular movement against the Romans. And when he saw that this was not the kind of person Jesus was, some feel he was pushing Jesus into action by having him arrested. But when he saw that they were going to kill Jesus and that Jesus would not resist, he regretted his actions and took his life. Whatever the reasons or motives behind this great betrayal, it's clear that at some point in Judas' heart, he moved from love to betrayal. He most likely began with small acts of betrayal, like stealing money from the, from the, from the common purse, maybe complaining about what Jesus wasn't doing. These small acts of betrayal eventually caused his love for Jesus to weaken and led to the ultimate betrayal of turning Jesus over for a few silver coins. In some ways, you know, Lent is an opportunity and has been an opportunity for us to ponder what little betrayals we might be guilty of. At first, you know, our betrayals, our sins might seem small and insignificant, but over time, those actions can develop into something powerful and dangerous. Maybe we betrayed a loved one through small lies, which eventually lead to a greater act of unfaithfulness. Maybe we betray others by petty gossip until that gossip leads to a greater scandal, which can ruin another person's reputation. Maybe we betray our faith by justifying small sins here and there until we are guilty of mortal sin. So what we discover is that our small and seemingly insignificant sins can eventually overpower us and overpower other people. As we continue our journey now through the cross, uh, let us learn from Judas's weakness and honestly seek forgiveness. Be attentive to the small things that perhaps we sometimes overlook.